Hi, I'm Lee, and this week on NASA Now, winter, spring, summer, fall, what's the reason for our seasons? Here's a clue, think, tilt. And we're celebrating Sun Earth Day this month with ancient mysteries and future discoveries. That's ahead. But first, let's find out what else is happening at NASA now. <laughs> Sun Earth Day is just a few days away and NASA is rolling out the red carpet to celebrate. Over the past 11 years, NASA's Sun Earth Day team has come up with some really exciting events to highlight NASA's research and discoveries. This year, a live webcast brought to you by NASA Edge will air March 19th. Check it out. Where have all the sunspots gone? That's the question some physicists were asking in 2008 and 2009 when sunspots almost completely disappeared. A team of scientists have discovered the answer. This model shows the cycle of sunspot formation, how they ride on plasma currents like ocean tides. It shows how they are born, decay, get pulled toward the interior of the star where they become reamplified and pop back up to the surface like a cork. In 2009, the plasma currents speeded up, giving less time for reamplification and very few sunspots. It was a period that science now refer to as a solar minimum. Read about this recent discovery right here on the NASA Explorer School's website. Hey, now let's take a look at the past. The first Earth Day was celebrated on April 20th, 1970. Last year, NASA helped commemorate the 40th anniversary of Earth Day on the National Mall in Washington. A NASA village was built featuring a science tent with hands-on demonstrations. She's been studying the stars and has been fascinated with our solar system ever since she was a child growing up in Hollywood, California. Now Kelly Fast makes her living as an astrophysicist at NASA Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland. She's here to answer the question, why do we have seasons on Earth? My name is Kelly Fast. I'm an astrophysicist here at Goddard Space Flight Center. I study the atmospheres of planets. We have an instrument that was developed here at Goddard Space Flight Center with a funny acronym called HIPWAC, and it is used at observatories uh, such as the NASA Infrared Telescope Facility and uh, the Japanese Subaru Telescope, which are on the big island of Hawaii, Mauna Kea, one of the best sites in the world for doing infrared astronomy. Well, the Earth has seasons not because it gets closer to the sun in the summer and then further away from the sun in the winter. It does get a little closer and further from the sun in its orbit. Uh, but what really causes the seasons is the fact that the Earth is tilted. Well, in the spring and fall, you hear the word equinox. During the equinoxes, you have 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of darkness. Well, it takes time for things to heat up and cool down. Uh, the summer solstice, that might be the time when we're getting, uh, in a particular spot on the Earth, the most sunlight. In the case of the winter, when, uh, you know, why is it that we get our cold weather after the first of the year instead of, you know, right at, uh, in December when we have the winter solstice? We don't know, <laughs> but it's possible to look at what's going on in the solar system and to try to track it back and come up with some ideas for why the Earth might be tilted. That moon that we have helps us to maintain our tilt, but how we got that tilt in the first place, uh, we, we can't know for sure. All we can do is theorize. We have a wide variety of tilts in the solar system. Some of them are tilted similar to the Earth, like Mars. Uh, you have planets like Jupiter that have very little tilt. They're almost straight up and down. And you have a planet like Uranus that is tilted beyond, <laughs> beyond the horizontal. It's tilted so far over that uh, it's, it's gone beyond where it would be if it were just rolling around the sun. 
Other planets do have seasons, just like the Earth does, in, in the sense that there is a change as they go around the sun and as the sunlight hits it differently because of their tilt. The planets that aren't tilted as much don't show as much seasonal behavior. A planet like Mars has a tilt similar to ours, and it has similar seasons. Well, as a scientist, I'm motivated to discover the unknown just because I'm amazed with just what's out there. It seems like every time uh, you get a little taste of uh, maybe some solution to the unknown, you want to find out more and more. It's okay to, uh, to not know everything, but it's important to try to understand what's out there because by understanding what happened in the past, it might help us to understand our present, understand our future. Did you know that most magnetic storms on Earth happen during the equinoxes in March and September? Well, that's because the position of the Earth allows for greater interaction with the interplanetary magnetic field. Now you know. Italian composer and violinist Antonio Vivaldi used the Earth's seasonal relationship to the sun as inspiration for his masterpiece, The Four Seasons. The Four Seasons consists of four violin concertos, each inspired by a different season. Check out this website where you can listen to an excerpt from each of the concertos and decide which season Vivaldi is trying to portray. Well, that's it for NASA Now. Be sure to tune in next week when we learn about lunar mathematics and mapping. We'll see you then on NASA Now. <laughs>